People often ask how our organisation started. I'm Daphne, founder of Generation to Generation, and today I'm going to tell you. So I want to start off by saying I never had a vision for it. I never was called to it. I never had any inclination to start an organisation. So what happened? Well, probably about 27 years ago, I was sitting in a church in Ely, not far from where we live now. And I was just sitting, talking, chatting, and I was just one of the member of the congregation. And somebody came from Houston in Texas by the name of Mary Jean Pigeon. And she came up and she said, God has told me to invite you to our church in Houston. Well, I looked around thinking, who's she talking to? Because I had not been out the country. I had not been teaching, preaching or doing anything significant. And so I just looked at her and I said, OK, I'll come. So we went to Houston and while we were there, I remembered that there was an organisation nearby that focused on cell church. Now, for those of you who don't know what that is, it is a way of being church, which focuses very closely on small groups as the building block of the church. And I knew that our church in Ely was going to, to go in this direction. So I asked, can I go and have a look at some books? So I went into the bookstore and there was equipping for adults. So with my way of thinking, I thought, well, there must be equipping for teenagers and there must be equipping for children. So I, as, as a gentleman came through, I said, excuse me, do you have equipping for children and equipping for young people? And he said, well, no, he said, but you can write some if you like. Well, that was a flippant conversation with it by him. But for me, in my innocence at the time, I thought, wow, I've been commissioned to write a book. So I went away and started working on these materials. Now I'm going to give you lots of pieces of the puzzle and it will all come together in a minute. Then I said, could I go to a cell group and experience what it's like? So I went to one and I sat at the table and um, a gentleman said to me, hello, what's your name? And I said, my name's Daphne. And he said, well, my name's Bill Beckham. And we started a conversation. Then I go back to my church and a bit a while later, a notice came round and it said, Bill Beckham will be speaking at the YWAM Centre in Harpenden. And I thought, wow, I met him in Houston. I want to go and listen to him. So I went to listen. I think it was about a three day conference. And the last afternoon, another gentleman came to me and he said, Bill would like you to talk about intergenerational life in the church. Now, I hadn't gone and spoken to Bill because I had the he won't remember me syndrome, but he had obviously seen me across the room. So I looked at this gentleman and I didn't really understand what he meant by intergenerational life in the church. He said to me, but you talked to Bill about it in Houston. Now, I had, didn't know I'd talked about anything significant. I just talked about things as I saw them in the Bible. So I said, well, Yes, I can talk about that for 10 minutes if you want me to. So they asked me to and I stood up on that last afternoon and I talked for 10 minutes about something that I thought everybody knew about because it's all the way through the Bible from start to finish. And when I finished, everybody stood up and they were clapping and they were cheering and I stood there thinking, what just happened? Well, the head of YWAM UK at the time, Lawrence Singlehurst, then said, I think we should run a conference for you. So I said, well, OK. Went back home and frantically looked for books on this subject and couldn't find any. Now, Lawrence has said, if we get 30 people, we'll run the conference. A couple of weeks beforehand, I said to, called Lawrence and I said, did you get 30 people? And he said, oh, I should have called you. We've got 300. So now I'm in panic because I haven't got any cross references to what I should be talking about. Can't find other books. So I went back to the only book I knew that told me about it, which was the Bible. And so I spoke for, I don't know how long it was, probably for a day on the topic of intergenerational life in the church. Well, 
after that, people began inviting me to go to places. And by then I was taking Andrew and Daniela, who were children. I was taking them with me. And they began to ask me to speak in places. Now, again, in my innocence at the time, I thought, if I'm speaking in places, I need resources. I mean, everybody has resources. Do you remember how in that bookshop I was told to write some materials? So I pulled up these materials that I had been told to write in the bookshop in Houston and I couldn't use the computer so I copied them through the photocopier, stuck things on, put them through and then put them together with a staple. And when I went round to speak I handed out these resources. Now I thought they were amazing at the time but I look back and actually think actually it was quite embarrassing the, the tacky way that I put them together but I had some resources. Well, then I get a message from Sweden. Can you come to speak? I thought, how have you heard about me? Well, we've got your resources here. And then I get a message from Australia. Can you come and speak? How have you heard about me? Well, found your resources on our coffee table. So these pieces of paper began finding their way around the world. And when somebody asked if I'd speak, I'd say, well, yes, I will. And so it rolled on from there. We have never asked for an engagement. We have never promoted ourselves. But today, about 40 nations have invited us to come because God put the word out. And so I never had a vision for this. I never felt called to it. I just found myself with my two children right in the middle of it. Now, at the time, People were saying, you need a name for your ministry. And again, I said, well, I'm not a ministry. I'm just going where people ask me to with Andrew and Daniela. So I haven't really got a ministry. Well, then we were in San Francisco. And as I was speaking, I noticed that there was some, a Jewish man there. And I felt a bit embarrassed because it's a very Jewish message at heart, mostly because it comes from a Jewish book called the Bible. And I went to him in the break and I said, I'm really sorry, you must know all this. And he said, no, actually we have lost this too. But he said, we have a name for what you're speaking. I said, what is it? He said, it's a door of a door, which means generation to generation. And in that moment, I know God named the message that we carry from which we get our name. And so now when people say, how was it founded? How do you build an international ministry, etc.? I had to say to people, well, I don't know. I don't know how you build it. I don't know how you do this. And one day I said to Jesus, you've got to give me a better answer than I don't know. And he said, it's quite simple, Daphne. And I said, what is it? He said, you just kept saying yes. And that is how Generation Today, 27 years later and 40 nations is still going strong because we operate on a yes. And if people say come, we go and we trust him. So that's our story. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit like below press the subscription and hit that notification bell so that you hear more updates for us. And do comment below because I'd love to know your response to what I've just shared.